we want your input. You know, we want you to be part of the program. Don't let me be just a lecturer. If when I'm saying something, you question it, and I'm sure you'll have some questions, stop me, explain it, explain your question, and I'll try and, and, and show you and tell you why I feel as I do and why I think perhaps that your approach is not correct or in my terms. And uh, your participation really makes the session, so don't, don't be bashful. You know, we're one happy family, and questions are important. There's nothing that I, uh, even when I'm teaching on a one-to-one -one basis, I keep saying, do you understand what I mean? Everybody says yes, but then, you know, they perform, and, and I know they don't. But they don't give me the question, well, why can't you do that? Why do you do this? Or why can't I do it the other way? Uh, your questions are the, the, the reasons that I'm here. Uh, the fact that I'm here and lecturing to you is not that important. It's what you get out of it and how you interpret the things in terms of what you're going to do. All right. <clears throat> well, first of all, I would like to 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 premise, preface the, the discussion with a very simple statement, and that is that golf is not as difficult as you make it. And those of us who are teaching with this concept, and I'll explain to you what it is in a minute, uh, feel that the game of golf is not as difficult as it is made. If you were trying to play baseball or any other sport with the ideas that you have in golf, you couldn't play those either. Okay? And uh, this is an implement that's called a golf club, and when you put this implement in a human being's hand, they lose their common sense. <laughs> okay? And let me give you an example. <clears throat> if you were throwing a ball to me, in which direction would you move your arm? towards me. Isn't that, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? But yet, I'm trying to send the ball in that direction, and you tell me that I have to hit it down. Does that make sense? So that's the contradictions. And as long as you have these type of contradictions, you're going to have trouble with the game. Now, if you want the ball to go to that tree, where should this club go? To the tree. To the tree. Now, how many of you think that way? Not too many. Okay. So that's the reason that golf becomes difficult. Now, the game of golf itself is difficult, yes. And why do you think the game is difficult? Not the hitting of a ball to a target, but the game. The, uh, the mind factor of it? Well, you have the mind factor in baseball and tennis, and you have it there all the time. But why golf? Why is it affecting golf more than, say, a tennis? Now, I haven't played tennis for five years, but I'll guarantee you I can go out on the tennis court and not make a fool of myself. Now, if I haven't played golf for five years, I'll make a fool of myself the first four or five holes. See? But why is that? Anybody suspect? Ball's not moving. No. That should make it easier, shouldn't it? <laughs> well, you're not, not I mean, moving. a blind person can hit the ball here, can't play tennis. So that's got to make it easier. So why is it hard? Why is the game hard? I think there's no defense. You have no ability to control your opponent. No. Uh, Anybody else? How many chances, if you were playing baseball, how many chances do you, hit, do you get to hit the ball? Three, three strikes. Pardon? You get three strikes. So they... Yeah, but how about the other one? you got four balls coming at you, too, so that's seven. seven. And if you keep fouling the ball, how many do you get? As many as, as, many as you times as you foul, okay? Now, if you hit it out of the park, you're a hero. Now, put that into golf. How many chances? One. one. And what does it have to be, that one? Perfect. Pretty close to perfect. See? Pretty close to perfect. And if you hit it out of the park, what happens? Two strokes. <laughs> That's why golf, the game, is difficult. It's not because the propulsion of a golf ball is a mystery. That's easy. But it's got to be right the first time. You have no second chance. If you did, scores would be a lot lower because, you know, you miss a button and you say, oh, I can't believe I missed that one. See, that's easy, second time. But you don't get that in golf. Tennis the same way. If you're serving, for instance, how many chances? At least two. You could get six if you keep hitting the top of the net. Golf, you can't, you don't do that. Okay. Now, how many chances do you get to make a point in tennis? <clears throat> sure. As many times as you can hit the ball over the net, that's, that's it. So you've got a lot of chances. In golf, you have one. So when you look at the game of golf, it is difficult only for that reason. It's not because of the fact that the motion is difficult 
or that your abilities are not as good as in other sports. It's got to be right the first time. Okay, what about the system that we're teaching and why is it becoming accepted finally after all these years that we've worked on it and why does it work? The principles that we're using, and of course this is repetition to some of you, for those of you who have not been with us before, it's important that you understand this, and review for those of you who have been is always good. But why is the Ernest Jones concept principles? It's now more of the deletory because I've changed it a little bit, and I'll, show, I'll tell you how I change it. Why is it so much easier to work with than some of these other things? When you do something yourself, do you know how your body moves? Do you know how it moves? Take any activity you want. If you're playing tennis, do you know how it moves? I have an idea how it moves, but I don't know really. No, exactly. Okay, you know it moves, but that's about it. Now, if you're taking the club and doing something with it or any other implement, a pencil, a hammer, do you know what you're doing with it? I hope so. I think I do. Well, sure you do. I mean, if you take a hammer, you certainly see it, so you know what you're doing with it. Now, uh, how many of you beat eggs with, with forks? You do. I thought you would be the one. Okay, okay. So I get a ball and get the eggs in there, and I and I beat him. Now see what my hips are doing. <laughs> now try to do that and make your hand move and beat the egg. See, I mean nothing's going to happen. Okay. Uh, people say to me, "Well, you got to use the legs." Okay. So I had a very interesting experience with with this particular statement because I happen to be the advisory professional at one of the public courses for the ladies. And uh, I go over there once a year, and they have a beat the pro day, and I work with them throughout the day. My first drive goes off at 7.30 in the morning, and my last putt goes in at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I bet you, you haven't played around that long. But it's a lot of fun because they're very interested and so forth. But anyway, one lady ran up to me and, and said, uh, you've got to show me how to get my hips into the shot to get more distance. And I said, what makes you think that the hips get, give you more distance? He said, well, my husband keeps telling me to get my hips in, and uh, I read it, and I hear it all the time, and I want you to show me how to do it. So right then and there, I said, now, I'll tell you what you do. If your husband tells you that you have to get your hips in, I said, you do this to him. Let me use you. Come over here. Just stand over here. I said, you have him hold the club like this. Okay, both, both hands. And I said, now, Move the hips as fast as you can to your left. Do so. See, the club didn't go anywhere. And you can use, now use the legs. Still doesn't go anywhere. Why? Okay, thank you. Why doesn't go anywhere? It's not connected. Now, if I were using my legs, and I, now the club's gonna do something. <laughs> but you don't have the club in the legs. You don't have it in the hips either. You have them from up here to the arms. So therefore, what would have to move it? Sure. Logical? How many of you think that way? Not too many. OK. So the body is certainly important because it has to flow with the motion you produce. But this is your boss. This is your boss. And when you learn to play golf, you learn to use the implement which is put in your hands, which happens to be called a golf club. Now, when you have any other implement, let's say that you're going to a machine shop and you're going to learn to use a machine, what do they teach you? Anybody? That's correct. So you didn't tell me how to work your elbows to push the finger and push the button. See, they teach you how to operate the machine. Any time that they give you any tool, they teach you, they teach you how to work what? The tool. And nobody tells you that your head has to be this way or this way, or the elbow has to be this way, your knee has to be this way. They tell you what to do with the machine or with the tool, whatever. That's the basic difference in the Ernest Jones concepts. We are trying to get you to use the golf club correctly. And we personally don't care what your body does as long as it fits the motion which you or you or you or you are producing with a golf club. And your body motion and your body motion and your body motion will never be the same. But your motion of the club can and must be the same. Because whether you're using a golf club to play 
your shot or your shot, you must do exactly the same thing with it, both of you. But I'll guarantee you, you watch the tour players, how many of them have the same body motions? Very few. And you should challenge that because you should say, nobody. And nobody does. But now when they start using this golf club, and especially now that the swings are getting very similar, you'll find that the motion of that club is almost identical for everybody. Okay? So we deal with the club. What is the basic job that you and I have with this golf club? What do we want to do with it? You fell in the trap. What do you want to do with it? Swing it. Swing it. What for? What is the basic reason we move this thing? Put the ball where you want it. No. Develop club head speed. Well, you almost fell in the trap too. One part is correct. We're trying to develop velocity, speed, not just club head speed. Because you see, that club head is attached to this too, isn't it? Yeah. And this is attached to this. So can you make that go fast all by itself? Okay, so you're trying to generate speed, period. Now there are two motions that you could use. You could use leverage, and you could use a swing in motion. Now why, throughout the years that golf has been in existence, why do we say it has to be swung? And there's a very good reason. Now leverage is a very strong motion, and it lifts very heavy objects. It's very powerful. But why can't we use that to play golf? Pardon? And what does a fulcrum do? Stability. It stays still, doesn't it? Okay. When something stays still, it cannot help velocity, can it? Okay. Now there's another even more important point, and that is that the forces which you're using to work a lever are what? When I push down, what happens to the other end? Opposing forces. Now let's take those opposing forces and transfer into, say, horses. Now you've got a little cart here, and you want the cart to go very fast. So you get two horses of equal power, and you make them go as fast as you can, but you put one on one end, and you put the other one on the opposite end. How fast will the cart go? Nowhere. What will it do? It'll stay right there. One cancels out the other, right? Okay, you've got opposite forces. Now suppose you take the two horses and put them on the same side and make them go as fast as you can. Now you've got velocity. Now what does this mean? Well, it simply means that in trying to swing the club to generate velocity, everything which is moving must be moving in the same direction at the same time and at the same rate. That's why we use a swing in motion, because that's what a swing in motion actually is. Now when you have a person that wants to hit the ball hard to create club head speed, Okay, you'll see this all the time. And what happens to the distance? Does it get greater or shorter? Shorter. shorter. Because there you're using what? A leverage action, and you see this point is going backwards while that's trying to go forward, so you've got the opposite action of those two ends, and you're canceling out the velocity rather than enhancing it. Does this make sense? Okay. So that's the basic fundamentals of, of the thing. Uh, we'll show you a little more in detail uh, as we go along.